Hi everyone, my name is Hannah and I'm currently finishing up my first year as a teacher. Right now I teach kindergarten in Maryland, but pretty soon I am picking up and moving down to North Carolina and teaching kindergarten there. So I'm starting a new series where I'm going to cover a whole bunch of different topics for things for first year teachers or new teachers, teachers that are just beginning, or if you're an older teacher and just looking for new ideas, hopefully I can give you some ideas to spruce up your classroom a little bit. So I'm going to be covering a lot of the topics that I wish that I knew going into my first year of teaching and also I reached out to you guys and asked you what topics you'd be interested in learning more about. So today we're going to be talking all about how to come up with a classroom layout that is best for you, your kids, your classroom, and your school. doing when you finally get access to your classroom, which by the way is the most exciting day ever, is measure everything that you have. Measure your classroom, of course, the perimeter, the area, all of that good stuff. You want to get all the measurements for your classroom so you know what size the space is that you have to work with. But then also, I would really recommend measuring your furniture because it will help you visualize what kind of space your furniture can fit into. So the first thing that I did was I measured everything that I have and then I actually went online. I have a whole tutorial video on how to map out your classroom layout on PowerPoint, which I found super helpful because it really makes it a lot easier. Instead of pushing furniture all over your classroom and changing the layout that way, that can get really tiring. Also can scuff up your floors and honestly, it wastes your time in your classroom. You could be doing other things. So I recommend measuring everything and then using those measurements to then map out your classroom layout on PowerPoint first and you can come up with a couple different options and kind of look at them and see what you think is going to work best so then when you actually do get into your classroom and want to start moving furniture you have a better idea of what's going to fit where and how you like things to be set up so if you're interested in how I set up my classroom on PowerPoint I will have that video linked down below so that you can go check it out because I found it to be so so helpful when you are setting up your classroom on PowerPoint or in real person some things you want to take into account are the different areas you want to have in your room so the first thing that I would start with the first area I would start with is the kids tables or desks so depending on which grades you're teaching you might have tables or you might have desks for the kids that's kind of the most important part because that's the kids area you want to make sure that they have enough room to work but then also those are kind of usually the bigger pieces of furniture in your classroom if you have tables they're pretty long and can be pretty big and if you have desks you probably have a lot of them so you want to make sure you have plenty of room for the kids to have enough space for them to work but also if you are going to expect them to maybe be looking at a screen like a Promethean board or a smart board or something while they're at their desk make sure that they have enough space and that they're facing the right way. So really setting up their desks and tables so that they are able to look at whatever you're going to want them to look at from their seats is super important. So I would definitely start by placing those first. So now this is where you kind of get to get creative too, looking at kids' desks or their tables, whatever you have. This really depends on your teaching style and what you want your kids to get out of this. You might want to put your kids in rows, people put their kids in clusters, people put their kids in pairs. It's totally up to you. You really need to think about your teaching style, what kind of collaboration you want the kids doing. I personally really like groups or clusters. I mean, in kindergarten we have tables so the kids don't really have a choice but to sit with each other, but I really like that because I like when they get to talk and collaborate on things because it lets them share ideas that they might not have in their own head. So I personally really love clusters and groups. And if you can avoid it, I would really try to think about how the kids are facing in their clusters if that's what you're deciding to do. Because if you have a whiteboard that you want everyone to be facing and you have clusters and kids' backs are facing the whiteboard, it's a little bit harder for them to learn that way and they'll have to be turning around all the time and maybe they would need a clipboard or something to lean on. So trying to avoid having anyone's backs to you or to the board or whatever you're trying to focus on is definitely something to look into if you can. I know not everyone has the space to do that, but I personally think clusters or groups are really awesome for that collaboration, but you just have to kind of configure it the right way so that everyone can still see what you're trying to have them see. Also when positioning your kids' tables and groups and stuff, definitely think about what is going to be distracting to them. If there is a huge window in your classroom and you know that kids walk by all the time, cars go by all the time, that's going to be something probably that the kids are going to get distracted by. So either you can close your blinds, that's always a good <laughs> fix to that if you have blinds, but just think about the fact that maybe you don't want your desks facing those windows because kids are going to be focused on that. So thinking about the different distractions, you kind of have to think ahead and foreshadow what is going to be a distraction for my kids in my classroom. And and try to be proactive and avoid that before it even happens. The next area that I would move to would be my whole group area. So I teach kindergarten so we do a lot of sitting on the rug. As you get older you don't do as much of that so this will kind of depend on the grade you're teaching but think about how many students you have and how often are you going to require them to come join together and either sit down on a rug or just gather in one space together. So I would come up with where you want to put that whole group section next because that's also probably going to be a pretty big area since everyone's going to gather together. So I know some people like to put it 
in their library and they put a rug down. Some people just have a big area rug, like I know in kindergarten we normally have like squares that they'll sit on, but it's a really big rug. So that's the next spot that I put together because once again, I often am going to be referring to our smart board or different charts and stuff and I want them to be able to see everything I want them to see from that whole group area. So I want to make sure that that is another focal point in our room and that they have plenty of space to all gather together. So after you have those two big main areas put together, then you can start looking at the smaller areas. The next one that I would look at is a teacher area because that's another place that's really important that kids are going to come gather. Whether it's a small group table or a kidney table, however you do it. I personally had a small group table, a little half circle table, so I made that my desk. I didn't have a teacher desk. That was where I would sit to do my small groups, but that was also where I would sit throughout the day to like grade papers and you know go through things. That was my area. And so I placed that spot next because because I wanted it to be in a spot where I could make sure that I could see everybody in the classroom. And I'll talk about that a little bit more in a minute, but I wanted to make sure that my area had vision of everything that was going on. It was in a spot where my back was never turned to the kids. They could never get behind me. I could see everybody. What comes next really depends on what grade you're teaching. In kindergarten, we have different centers. So I like to have a writing center. I have a library. I have a block area. It just really depends on your school. But that's something that I would start to look at next. Where do I want to put each of those little areas and I wanted each of those areas to be their own area and I wanted it to be distinct that that was its own area so if you do break up your classroom into different things like that especially if you have a library because I know most grades have libraries you definitely want to think about how am I going to show that this is an area and that it's not just an open space so I use different pieces of furniture like bookshelves or chairs to kind of section off areas so you do want to think about the different furniture that you have so that you can come up with an effective way to section off areas to show that if you are here you you are in the library, if you are here, you are in the writing center because it really helps kids know where they are and know what their purpose is, like why they're there. I'm in the writing center because I'm going to be writing. I'm in the library, this is my time to read. It helps them know that they have a purpose in that center when it is sectioned off and they are in that particular area. And honestly, this was actually really tricky when setting up my first classroom because you only have so much space to work with and you're trying to work around the guidelines of the school and making sure that you know furniture is placed in appropriate areas, but also you wanna think about what's gonna be happening in each of those areas. You have to think about the noise levels and stuff because because if areas are too close together and one is louder than the other, it might not be the most effective for those learners that are trying to just sit in a quiet area. One very important thing that is a huge safety factor is that you don't want to have any blind areas. So what that basically means is that wherever you are standing or sitting or placing yourself as a teacher in the classroom, you want to make sure that you can see everybody. So that might mean if there's a bookshelf up blocking one of your areas in and you can't see beyond that bookshelf, maybe it's too tall or too long and you can't see kids sitting on the floor if that's what they're supposed to do in that area, then you might want to think about repositioning the bookshelf because if you can't see the kids, you might not know what's going on back there and then it becomes a safety issue. So what I did was I stood in every possible spot in my classroom that I could think that I would be positioning myself for a long period of time and I looked around and I made sure that I could see everything. It's nice because a lot of classroom furniture is typically short, but you just want to make sure that if you are bringing in any of your own furniture you can see kids from wherever you are I have seen some cool tips of people using those like reflector mirrors that sometimes you see on roads to see around curves and stuff people will hang those up in the corner and it'll like reflect down onto the into that one section like maybe your library or something and so if you are having trouble positioning your furniture maybe you can get a mirror or so and you can still look up at the mirror and see what the kids down there are doing and that really helps too my next tip is that you really want to make sure that you don't have any runways what I mean by that is you do not want to have a long span of ground that a child can just run from one point to the next without having anything blocking them. So how you can really avoid this is setting up your furniture so it kind of makes things like a maze. You have to walk and then maybe there's a bookshelf, you have to turn, maybe there's a desk, you have to turn, there's a chair. You know, setting it up so that you don't just have long pathways for kids to run. Now, depending on your school, this might not be too big of an issue, but speaking from experience, I've seen kids get angry and just take off running. This number one tries to put a halt on running in the classroom if they don't have the space to run then they're less likely to run and it also helps them stay safer because no one is going so fast that they're gonna trip on furniture bump into things or hurt another child so even though we don't want runways in our classroom we do want to make sure that we have enough walking space between pieces of furniture if kids have to squeeze or become contortionist to get through different pathways it's probably not the best idea for them because that can cause an injury as well so making sure that there are spaces that are clear to them that this is a pathway for you to use will really help keep them from crawling under tables and doing things that they probably shouldn't be doing. Okay, my next tip is that 
you need to follow your school's guidelines. I know that my school had very strict rules against putting furniture up against our radiator because our custodians had to get in there if they needed to fix something or change the filters. So listening to your school's rules, maybe asking them before you go into there so that you don't make this whole setup plan and then realize, oh my gosh, I can't put any furniture there. Ask your administration first or your custodians and see what they're what they prohibit and what they recommend so that you really know what kind of space you have to work with because if you have the same rule as me, that takes out like half of a wall and then I couldn't put furniture on. So it really can mess up your plan if you already have planned it and haven't checked with those guidelines yet. And then my last tip for setting up your classroom is figuring out what you want the kids to be able to access. So if you have a whole bunch of teacher materials that you really don't think that you want the kids to be touching, I really don't recommend mixing those on bookshelves with things that they can access. Like if you have a bookshelf that has their toys or their indoor recess stuff, don't also put your stuff on the same shelf because it might confuse the kids. I know that not every classroom is blessed with a ton of storage, so sometimes you have to do what you have to do, but if that is the case, then just try to clearly label what is for them to touch and what is not for them to touch. But if you do have the ability, I would really recommend thinking about where you're putting supplies and stuff because if it's not something you want the kids to touch, I wouldn't recommend putting it in plain sight because it will make them more eager to touch it. And also going along with that, if you want your kids to be really independent and you're trying to build that independence in your class, make things available that they can go get by themselves without having to come ask you every single time. So if you want them to be able to go get new supplies when they need it, put that somewhere that is at their level for them to reach. Placing those items on something that they can access, like a low bookshelf or a cabinet that's low, is an awesome idea because it really does help them build that independence and it's one less thing that you'll have to do for them. So making sure that it is accessible for them is awesome. All right, everybody, that is all of my tips for setting up your classroom. I really hope you guys found this helpful. If you are looking for that video that will help you set it up virtually first on PowerPoint, I will have it linked down below. And that is it for today. So thank you guys so much for watching and I will talk to you in the next video. Bye.